Right, what's happening people and welcome back to the Joey Knight podcast. We are back in the studio today and I am very lucky to be joined by my guest on today's show, Josh Aveste. Josh, how's it going, mate? Yeah, very good. I can't wait for this Liverpool game. I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely buzzing for it to start. You'll be slightly more buzzing than me because you'll be at the match. I have tried desperately to get a ticket to this match and I can't get one for love nor money. So if you're a generous person and you're watching this video right now, Get in the comments. Get me a ticket for this match and I'll be there. I'll buy the drinks. Um, But going into this match, the transfer market is moving very, very quickly. We could have one, two, maybe even three names through the door by the time this video drops. But as it stands, we want to give our ideal 11 to face Liverpool a week today on Sunday in the first match of the Premier League season. Let's touch on Liverpool to start. Where do you put them? in terms of how far behind Man City they are. Because I've gone on record as saying that I think they're the second favourites for the title. Which, with the amount of change we've seen in the club, a lot of people might be looking and saying, well, surely Arsenal, you know, Man United, possibly Chelsea. I do think, under the stewardship of Jurgen Klopp, they're going to be the team that are right up there this season. That's my personal opinion. However, saying that, I also think we're going to smash them 5-0 on the opening day. So... (laughs) Where do you put Liverpool going into this season? I think they've got the best front five in the league almost. Mm. They're right up there in terms of their attacking. I think they've got one of the least exciting back fives, Mm. if that makes sense. So it's sort of a tale of two halves here in terms of the pitch. So like, I'm really worried about them for their sake from a defensive perspective. Mm. Like, I feel that they're very leaky. In pre-season, they've conceded four goals twice in, in games and three goals once. Right, and they're not against big teams, right? They, they, fair enough. They conceded four goals against Bayern, but then there are two other teams. They, uh, they uh, conceded two against Karlsruhe, mm. not the best team in Germany by any means, and four goals against Firth. Mm. I didn't even know Firth was a team. No, I can't lie to you. So to concede that amount of goals in preseason, when we saw them as leaky as they were last year, I know a lot of Liverpool fans that are like. Oh, I'm a bit worried about this year. Like, I don't quite know how it's going to go. They've got the most variance, I think, for me, out of any of the top seven. Yeah. Like, I could see them finishing second. I could also see them finishing eighth. The key thing, right, is they don't have a DM. No. And that is, as we know, we're literally about to spend £150 million on DMs. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's a key position. We've seen it with Kante. We've seen it with McAlady for us. They are generational players that, that push a team on. Without that position, they're struggling. Guess who they've been playing there? Curtis Jones. Yeah, he's not not a defensive midfielder. Good player. Uh, actually, I would say a fairly good player, right? I wouldn't say he's anywhere near the top 10 in terms of defensive midfielders. I wouldn't even say he's definitely a first-team starter for Liverpool. Yeah, but he's been starting for them. So they, they're either going to need, in the next 10 days, they're going to need to really get serious in the transfer window, bring in Lavia and integrate him into the team very quickly. But even then... Yeah. Even then, we speak about bringing in Lavia. Yeah. Even then, okay, if we're going Declan Rice, you know, Rodri, Casemiro, you don't then go, yeah, Lavia. You definitely don't go, Curtis Jones. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's that simple. So I think that's an area that we can really exploit. And so for them, I'd be a bit concerned. But I think overall, their lineup's good. And on paper, their defence is really, really, mm. really strong. But... Van Dijk hasn't been on it recently. Matip, I'm not sure how good he actually is in terms of the grand scheme of things. And then Canate, mm. again, like he should be starting, but he isn't really even starting for them. So, yeah, I, I, I think it'll be interesting to see what team actually plays for Liverpool. Do you know what I think? Go on. I think we're playing them at the perfect time. Yeah, I think I we think are this too. is the perfect time, not just to play Liverpool, but also for us to go and put our flag in the ground and go, there you go. Didn't see that last season, did you? Mm. We beat one of the big boys straight away. Okay, yeah, they've had pre-season, conceding a few goals, you know, haven't lit the world up in pre-season. But at the same time, pre-season doesn't mean all that much unless you're a Chelsea fan or maybe even a Tottenham fan. A bit of silverware <laughs> in, in, in the old cabinet for Spurs. Um, but what I would say is if you look at the perfect time to play Liverpool, yeah, mm. the stability they have is in the front line, in the manager. You touched on the defence there. Not great, you know, on paper, brilliant, but football's played on grass. You know <laughs> what I mean? So at the end of the day, you just don't know what you're going to get from them. I think the instability within that midfield, not just in the fact they haven't got a central defensive midfield player, but who is to say that Shaboshla is going to hit the ground running? Okay. 
McAllister, you would put your money on slightly more. He just that. got injured as well. Like he's he's <coughs> like unsure whether he's going to be playing really? over the start of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's a key one there. I just think we're getting them at the perfect time. The mm. perfect time. Listen, we're going to play them again at Anfield later on in the season. But the perfect time to play them is in that match. It's mm. almost a free hit isn't it? Because the expectation levels, as much as expectations have grown on us as a fan base, whatever, the expectation levels are fairly low. I also think that if, you know, and we'll go through our team, but if Nicholas Jackson comes up with a goal in that first match to have done it against possibly Canate and definitely Van Dyke mm. straight away, beating Allison to get a goal, that's going to be a massive, massive confidence boost. And that is what I see from this match. I see win, lose or draw it being a confidence boost for our players, unless there's, you know, harsh reality check and we get pumped, which I really just don't see happening. I truly believe we're winning this game. But what we do need to work out is what is the 11 to start this game? Should we go, how should we do this? Should we go position by position? Yeah, let's go, let's go one by one and, and then we'll okay. do a consensus on what we agree with. Because I think there's going to be some that um, mm. I've got a couple of wild cards in the team. But... So keeper, assuming yeah. we haven't signed Sanchez by then, and in my opinion, even if we have signed him by then, we're going Kepa. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> that was a, that was a hesitant. Yeah, I'm yeah, not sure. Right? I, I think if we do get Sanchez in and he plays in time to start a like behind closed doors friendly game, yeah, I'm of the opinion that I might start Sanchez in cool. this game just because like. Basically, I don't know if Kepper is the future. I don't think he's wowed me in preseason to a level where I'm like, yeah, start him every game for Chelsea. And so I think I think Sanchez is going to be knocking on the door. I, ultimately, uh, my head says that Pochettino will go for Kepper. But if it was me, my decision, I think if Sanchez comes in, I might start him. I think Kepper had a good little run under Graham Potter at the start. Two players under Potter right at the start. Kepper and Mount both had good runs. And they both just tailed off. And like you say, there hasn't been anything that's massively impressed me. Do I see Kepper as the future between the sticks for Chelsea? Unfortunately, I don't. Mm. But I do like the player. Yeah. I do like the player. I do think sometimes changing the goalkeeper is a big, big call. The instruction to that back line and whatnot, having another Spanish goalkeeper coming in may mean that we don't upset the apple cart too much. But yeah, for me, I probably would still go Kepper there for the stability factor. And I'll compromise because I think it will happen. So let's mm. go. Let's put Kepper in there. Right back. For me, it's obvious that it's got to be Reese James. But we have got to say that Mano Gusto has looked good. I would say he's been one of the players of pre-season. Yeah. I'm very encouraged to say that we've got two quality right backs because we know Reese's injury records. Mm. He won't be playing every game for Chelsea this season. It's just the way it's going to go. He will get injured. And so to have Gusto coming in as the backup, I'm, I'm chuffed with it. We've got two quality options there, but we know that Reese is going to start in this game. Back two, there'd be a little bit of debate amongst some people. I would pair Thiago Silva, who I think there's probably a good chance he's given the captaincy by that point. I would pair him with Levi Colwell. I think that's the future of our club in terms of Levi Colwell. Thiago Silva, obviously, look, we're going to see how the new boy comes in and does um, the sassy. The sassy, yeah. We're going to look at, obviously, for final towards the end of the season when he comes back from injury. But for the here and now, again, we've got a very young squad. And you look at Pochettino's way of doing things and it would sort of lean towards maybe he's not a massive person that buys into the experience factor so much. But it can't be denied that experience is key. And I do think that it's got to be silver in there. I think we'll pair him with Caldwell. Would you agree on that? I would say that the, the two that I would choose would be Thiago and uh, Caldwell. Mm. But I have to say that Chaloba, for me, if he's still at the club, is an option there. And the only reason why I'm saying that is the pace of Liverpool's attack. I do worry about pace around Thiago Silva with his age. And especially with the system that we're going to be playing where there will be one player bombing on and you will have to form a back three. I am kind of worried about like uh, Thiago Silva getting done around the back, mm. basically. So uh, for me, I would start those two. But I think that Ch Chaloba might be an outside shout to mm. play alongside Colwell. So let's see. Left back's an obvious one. Yeah. It's got to be Kukura. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quality. Cucurella could be out of the out of the squad by then, mate. Let's hope Cucurella so. Cucurella could be gone. Anyone who hasn't watched this channel, people that have watched this channel know full well that that's obviously a joke. It's, <laughs> it's Ben Chilwell. Yeah, I don't think we need to talk too much no. about that. I think Chilwell is by far the number one. I find it a bit interesting that so many people are saying that Matson should be over Chilwell when Matson's played further forward yeah. all pre-season. Listen, I am loving what I'm seeing from Matson. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in love with Ian Matson. He's quality. <laughs> but... Even if he was a left back and it wasn't the option of playing him forward, it is Chilwell. Yeah. It, it is Chilwell. Enzo, we know, is going to be one of those two. 
But who do we pair him with? This is the question because you've got the new boy, Leslie Ugachukwu, coming in. Might be a bit too soon for him if he hasn't played sort of behind closed doors friendlies or whatever. And even so, it could be too soon. Then I think the front runner for most people is Andre Santos. Yeah. That's what I would say from my sort of gauge with the fan base. The front runner is Andre Santos there. Gallagher is an other obvious option. For all we know, Gallagher might be at West Ham by that point. We don't <laughs> yeah, even true. know. And then Cassidy. And that's one I would give a strong shout to because I believe that aerial presence in the middle of the park is a big thing. And I love the way he drives forward. He's a good player, Cassidy. He is. Um, so for me, it is between Andre Santos and Cassidy. Good shouts. I like both of them. I think Cassidy is going to be one of those players that will go on loan. And I think that could happen before the end of this uh, before the, this game. Premier League club, surely. I hope it is a Premier League club, but I'm hearing rumours about Leicester. And I think top end of the championship might be all right. Um, especially with yeah. the way he's, they've got an Italian manager. I've, I, I rate that. I think that would be an all right move. If it's lower, cham uh, lower Premier League, it's harder because then he's in a worse team. He's not going to shine as much. He won't be able to get forward as much. So it's hard. Mm. I think Santos for me is the one that we go for. I think he, the, the other boys won't be in situ and, and have had enough preseason with Poch mm. in time by then, both um, Alvarez and uh, Caicedo, which really they'll be the, the two that are batting out for that position going forward. So yeah, I think, I think Santos is the one that I'd go for. I think that even even though I gave Cassidy a good shout and if I compared the two players, I might say, mm, you know, mm. there's a real conversation to be had there. Mm. You've also got to look at the fact that, all right, you don't build your player around one team. We're not a one-man team, but we did fork out a fair bit of cash for Enzo Fernandez. So I think we've got to prioritise here having someone who frees up his game and partners best with getting the best out of Enzo Fernandez. And I'd agree with you, it's Andre Santos at the minute. Yeah. We'll see how Caicedo looks if and when he comes in for the second. It is Andre Santos there. And that's for me why I wouldn't play Gallagher there because I don't think he allows Enzo to move forward in a way that like actually gets the best out of him. Mm. Like Gallagher is the one that's going to want to push on. And so that's for me why I'd go Santos. But a lot of people will back him Gallagher and he has had a really good preseason. For me, he's more of that, that 10 role mm. as opposed to that like four or six row. For this front line, are we just going to assume that Nkunku's knock he picked up last night isn't too serious? It seems like it was a knock. Uh, and I think it was like just a, a tackle on the ankle. Mm. It didn't seem to me from what I've seen of the footage that it was a roll or that it dug in the, on, no. in the turf. So for me, it should just be a, an impact. Injury. I saw him walking around the side of the pitch and he was walking slowly rather than limping, which is, you know, a positive. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to put him in the 10. I think we'd both agree, agree. in Kunku goes in that 10. One side of him, I think we're both going to agree that it is going to be Mikhailo Mudrik. Yeah, he tore Liverpool up last season, yeah. didn't he? When he came on, I think he was absolutely brilliant against Good them. little cameo, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. And I feel like he, it's hard, right, with pre-season because I always want to see a bit more of him. Mm. Um, and I haven't seen as much of him as I wanted to, but he's just a quality player. He's got pace. And I feel like that back line with the way that those wing backs do push up for Liverpool, they will be exposed for pace. I feel like we need to prioritise pace this season. So mm. I would 100% start him on the left. So we've got Nkunku in the 10. Yeah. Mudrik on the left. Yeah. On that right wing, this is this is an area for debate. And it's probably the last area for debate on the pitch. I'm saying Ian Matson. Yeah, I agree with you. You'd go Ian Matson, yeah? I would. I would. So we'd have him over Noni Madueke. We'd yeah. have him over potentially, um, I don't think Angelo's going to be there or thereabouts, no, but potentially Sterling. Sterling coming on to the other side. I just think Ian Matson. I really do. And I think when we look at substitutes in this match, there's there's a option there that maybe other players might come in. But for me, it's got to be Ian Matson. I, I think we just take the brakes off and let him go for it. Yeah, he's been so good. And what I like about putting Matson on that position is he can cut inside, use his left foot, and then also like he'll sit more of a sort of like a, a central role. We've seen that. And I, what I like about Pochettino is he doesn't necessarily always play wingers as wingers. He likes creating this sort of like box formation in the final third, which is sort of like having the two DMs, the centre attacking mid, and then the, like one of the wingers forming this sort of like square shape. And it allows you to play the ball around and attack. And I, I think that's a really good system that Poch has integrated tactically and Matson fits that role really well in terms of cutting in and being able to play the ball around quickly so for me he's the the one the one that we have to talk about though is Sterling here because mm. he's meant to be one of our best players most experienced heads meant to be quality playing one uh, you know his old team he's meant to be well up for it and I just think he like for me he's not even the first sub I, I don't even know if he's the second sub for me mm. I think when it comes to matching Liverpool for energy and pace what we're going to have to do in this match uh, as brilliant as experience is, I just don't think Sterling's going to be the man to do that. Mm. So I think we agree, Ian Matson there. And then up top, 
whether we bring in Vlahovic, whether we bring in Mbappe, no matter what, <laughs> it's the new fan favourite. It's, it's Jackson. It's got to be Jackson. Drogba Mark II has got yeah. to play in this game. Yeah. It's as simple as that. What a quality player. I love watching him play. I love his pace. I love his link-up play. Love everything about the guy. So for me, he is the number nine. I don't know whether I'd give him the shirt. Mm, I don't. I don't know about that. <laughs> just on, just on the record. But like, he'd start for me against Liverpool. Yeah, hundred percent. So there's our team, and I'm going to put it out there. That is a scary team, and I know where we're going to lean towards with this. I think everyone knows my thoughts on it. But I'm just going to put the question to you, Josh. Does that team beat Liverpool on the opening day? Yeah, I'm going to go three-one Chelsea. Three-one. Yeah, I think oh. I think we'll score goals. I think they'll score and potentially score first. But I think we'll have enough quality and especially a lot of pace coming off the bench. Do you know what? I like that 3-1 scoreline. I'm going to agree with you. No. 3-1. <laughs> 3-1 Chelsea. Yeah. I love a bit of that. That'd be good. Right, people, let us know your thoughts. Is there any players that we've included in that 11 that you wouldn't have? Is there any players we haven't included in that 11 that you think have got to be a sure thing starting for Mauricio Pochettino's Chelsea on the opening day against Liverpool? And most importantly... I want to know how you lot see this game going. Score predictions in the comments below and we will see you in the next video.